from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Proud to be here with you, and thank you so much for tuning in to the show this morning and every single Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time right here on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. It's always an honor and a privilege to speak with you, and I hope that your week is going well as we've hit the Midweek point, I hope all is well on your end and that you're enjoying your week and getting ready. For those in central and upstate New York, I know that you're all getting ready to watch that Syracuse game coming up this Friday, March 23rd, against in-conference rival Duke inside of the NCAA tournament. And that will be obviously a huge game, a huge opportunity, and Omaha, Nebraska, here I come. So with that being said, let's jump into the morning menu. There's plenty to talk about in today's show, so let's get into it. Here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we like to start off the show by giving you our menu of topics. The morning menu, that is, live now with the morning menu is Dan Tortora. Today's morning menu, proudly presented right here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, will feature my one on my, <laughs> what is it, one on five, I guess we would call it, with Bailey Legnetto, Mackenzie Smith, Madison Smith, head coach Stafford Spreeder, Haley Collins, and Maya Case, all of the West Genesee girls basketball team that made it to the final four in the States this year, back to back championships in sectionals from last year to this year. Stafford Spreeder has won two sectional championships in his three seasons as the head coach, and this team has been phenomenal. And as Bailey, Maya, and Haley move on before they do that, they spent some time with me at the Wildcat Sports Pub, and we're going to get into that conversation. You're going to hear the full-length conversation with these young women as well as the head coach, Stafford Spreeder, in this West Genesee special airing this morning Coming up right after this fast break, and after that, after you hear from West Genesee, I will have two interviews live here this morning, one with Dale Shackelford, the other with Otis Smith, to speak on this Syracuse Orange men's basketball team, where they're at, and where they potentially could be going. That's all coming up after this fast break. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Hi, this is Domenico Vitali, owner of Giovanni's Formal Wear, where you look great and feel even better with our renowned tailoring and alteration services on any suit or any tuxedo from anywhere. Call 315-455-8729. That's 315-455-8729. Stop in locally on Route 11 in North Syracuse next to the Ponderosa Plaza where you can choose your style, get fitted, and tailored, all at Giovanni's Formal Wear. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice from buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking pre-owned, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or hondacity-cny.com. It would be a pity if you don't shop. For all of us that have always wanted our favorite restaurant to come to us, it's now a reality in Central New York with It's a Utica Thing. With Utica Pizza Company bringing their wonderful recipes that they've handed down through generations to you, to your event, to your business, to your home. It's a Utica Thing. Proudly bringing Utica Pizza Company on wheels to your location. Call 315-738-8946. That's 315 315- 738-8946 to bring Utica Pizza Company to your doorstep with It's a Utica Thing. 
All right, we're getting started here with Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, live on location. We appreciate your patience today as the Syracuse Orange have continued to move on in the NCAA tournament. I have been home for a day and a half since March 5th. So, out in Brooklyn, out in Dayton, and on to Detroit. Flew home today to do the show with you. And I'm very happy to be here. The girls told me they are tired. I think I can match them with it. So Haley Collins, Maya Case, Mackenzie Smith, Madison Smith, and Bailey Legnetto, as well as head coach Stafford Sweeter. I'm Dan Tortora. Please give these young women and this coach a round of applause for a phenomenal season. And while, while we're keeping the round of applause going, how do you like your Syracuse Orange right now? Love love. All right, I, I want to gauge the room here by clapping and cheering. How many of you think they can actually beat Duke in the Sweet 16? All right, how many think that they can't beat Duke? Now to hear that. All right, one person. I like that. Good courage. One guy who's trying to go against them. We got a Doug Gottlieb in the house right now. That's okay. That's all right. It'll work out for Syracuse, we'll be confident. But we're here with the West Genesee girls basketball team of the Wildcats. Thank you for your patience today, as I said, traveling back from Detroit. And I want to start with Coach, and just what you could say about the run this season. I believe it ties the longest that the team has ever gotten in the playoffs. Just what you could say about the postseason this year. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the uh, the longest that uh, West Tennessee has uh, has played. Uh, back in 1994, we also made the Final Four. Uh, back then, uh, I think it was in Watkins Glen then. Uh, but um, I just, I'm so proud. You know what I mean? Like, I think on Saturday night, you know, I got home and I watched the the film over again. And you know, as as you could probably imagine, got a little upset. We live in everything, but um, you got to really look at it as to what these kids accomplished. And it was a really special season, and it does like we played really, really well when we needed to play really, really well. Uh, it was a tie game against Baldwinsville, and we came out in the third quarter and we played lights out. And uh, we played CNS. We were down seven to two to start the game, and then we just played lights out from there for the rest of the game. Colony, we had a slow start in the first quarter, and then lights out from there. And then we played against Austin, and we started lights out. And I was talking to my buddy from Florida who was watching us on TV, and he said, his first impression of us was that, he said, staff, your team is great. Like, this is one of the best teams I've ever seen. And I told him, like, that's how we usually play. Like, all those moments that I talked about, the Bevo game, the CNS game, the three quarters of Colony, like that, and the first quarter of Austin, that's how these kids play. And I'm really, really proud to see how they've grown since they were, you know, Maya and, and, and uh, Haley since they were sophomores, um, and everybody, and you know, Mackenzie and Madison since they were freshmen, and, and Bailey and everybody else for the past three years to see how far that they've grown and uh, how much that they can handle uh, in, in big games. And, and you know, the sky's the limit. Very, very excited of uh, about this season. Very excited about moving forward. But the bottom line is, you know, talk about this season and celebrating it and taking, you know, you put like 11 months of hard work into a season. You kind of want to, you kind of want to enjoy it um, when it's over with, you know, before you start going on the next next part and the next part of your journey for the next year. So I think right now it's it's time to focus on the positive and and uh, be proud of what these kids accomplished and uh, you know, gonna miss them and so uh, very very proud of them. Haley, I want to start with you here. Coach said he wanted to celebrate before he looks to next year. What has he done celebration-wise? Has he done anything for the team as of yet? Um, well, we have our team banquet on Sunday, okay. so probably then, I'm okay. going to assume. <laughs> is, he, is he getting everybody a gift? He is now. Yeah, now he is. <laughs> what would you like Coach to get you? Ryan Picture of Ryan Reynolds. Uh, maybe not that. Maybe not that. Okay. <laughs> maybe some sunglasses right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what can you say about this season and, and just what you took away from it, getting as far as you got to the Final Four and winning another championship? Just what that meant. I think it was definitely the most special season out of the three that I was a part of. Um, our team was so close as a unit, and it was just it made every day so much better coming knowing that you're just going to laugh and have fun and get things done at the same time. And Madison, I want to ask you about 
what you've taken away from the team and what you've seen at this point. You said that you were tired, and, and I rivaled you with being tired, so I'm going to ask you to speak here. What can you say about this season? Um, I don't want to use this. <laughs> well, it's been like a great ride. Um, like Haley said, like every day at practice, it just gets better and better knowing that we're going to go so far. And I don't know, like enjoy every second of it. Bailey, I, I gotta ask you because my mother is the exact same height as you, <laughs> and and I would say that all four, four is it four ten? Four eleven. Okay, so 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 mom mom's mom's four ten. So you got her by an inch. But, you know, when Coach spoke about the heart that you had and the way that you started the season and some of the things that you had done and the way you ended the season, just what you took away from this year. Um, this season will, I'll never forget it because all the laughs we shared at practice, all the fun times we had, um, and it was just a fun year. I had fun time. <laughs> and these girls are some of my best friends, so that will be there forever. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I want to I want to continue with that the the family aspect of it. And when you said that, you know, how much these girls mean to you, and then Haley just said she's our favorite. Just what you could say about the connection that you've had this season, and I felt it at the beginning of the season when the whole team was here and laughing and having a good time over my shoulder and then you know each of you obviously sitting here and, and joking around with one another just what you could say about how it became such a family aspect and, and how everybody came together this year um so i've been playing basketball with these girls for as long as i can remember and this year we had like a goal that we wanted to get to the state final four and i think that just pushed us to become closer. We all had the same goal and we worked really hard to get it. And then practices ended up, they were hard, so we had to come closer together to get through the hard practices. And then we just got close. But a lot of team dinners, so that made us closer to um, summers spending. So yeah, it was just a good time. And <laughs> well, that's all I got to say. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Because they're talking about team dinner. If I'm remembering this correctly, are you the one that ate all the chicken wing dip? No, oh, it was Madison. Okay. So what was your favorite thing about team dinner then? Whatever we ate, I guess. Uh -huh. Whatever. Do you have a favorite since you didn't get to eat any of the chicken wing dip? I like everything. I like everything. Okay. You and your sister, a few words, but on the court, you did a lot for the team this year. What can you say about the fact that the Smith sisters were relatively unstoppable this year? <laughs> How well you, you think that you did as a unit? You and your sister did a lot for this team. I mean, it'd be pretty hard to play good without her, so... I don't know, I guess it'd work with a lot of other people too, but I don't really know how to answer that. <laughs> hey, Madison, what, do you feel like there is that sibling kind of osmosis? You know where she is, she knows where you are. Is that fair to say? I love how you do, yeah, you don't even want the mic. Yep, you let it all play out on the court. All right, Maya, since, since the Smith sisters will not tell me about this season a little bit more, what can you say about this season and what you took away from it? I think this season especially, we were more mentally prepared for what we were going to face on the road. Last year we were ready for sectionals, but as soon as we won sectionals, we knew like that was our goal all year, so we kind of took a mental break after that. Whereas this year, we had won sectionals previously, so we came into it knowing that we wanted to get further than that. So after we won sectionals, we knew that we had to keep working hard and busting our butts to get to that next level, and we got a step further, so I mean, I thought it was a pretty great season. It's hard to win sectionals once, let alone let alone back-to-back -back years. Just what you could say about 
how this team got back there. Because it's one thing to want to get there, and it's another thing to do what you need to do to put yourself back in that position. Yeah, I think winning sectionals last year definitely helped us in that situation. So we took that motivation from winning sectionals to do it again. Because we knew how great that feeling was, and we just used it to push us this year. Haley, what you can say about that goal of moving forward and getting past sectionals, getting to the Final Four, attaining that. So for the team coming up this coming season, it's got to be the championship game. And that's got to be where you're at, correct? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, even though the Final Four didn't end the way you wanted it to, just what you took away from getting to that point? Honestly, it was just a really cool experience being able to get to a state tournament like that. And for the team that's coming up, like when I was a sophomore, we lost the sectional championship by a lot, and it stung a lot. So we remembered that, and then my junior year, we came back and we worked so hard to win it, and then we did. And we lost in regionals, and that stung a lot. So this year, we came back and we won regionals. So I know that this loss stung a lot, so I have all confidence that this team can win the state championship next year. So it really comes down to that you experience it, but, and you get to the wrong side of it, you know what it feels like, and you battle back and have taken at least one step over that game each year. Exactly. What is it about the team that's, that has been able to do that? I mean, how, how can you see those mistakes, know what's going on, but then get back there and take care of it? It's one thing to notice where you went wrong. It's another thing to take care of business. How did this team do it? How did this team come together at the best possible time? I think we're just a very determined group of girls and we just kind of always have been and we know how to self-correct and not to make the same mistake as we did before. This is a wake-up call fast break. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or ice milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Clothing that will change with you without you having to change. DrySigLady.com, D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, Lady.com. With the bamboo line, relaxed fit clothing, as well as the athletic fit clothing, DrySigLady.com is fit for any woman, any time of the day, anywhere. Whatever you're doing, whatever your day commands of you, Command yourself to feel comfortable in Dreisig Lady Apparel. D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G Lady.com For all the women out there, feel good in what you're wearing. And don't feel like you have to constantly change throughout the day. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, a business owner, going for a jog, going for a meeting, or just relaxing at home, DrySigLady.com is the right fit for you. D R E I S S I G Lady dot com. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. Call our home office at 315-752-9513. Or better yet, call or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Let me ask you a question, Lawrence. If I needed you to help me buy a house, find the right place, could you help me do that? Joe, I'll help you find your dream home. You don't ever say my name on the radio, never. If I needed to sell a house, could you help me go about that the right way? Yes, yes I can. How do they get a hold of you? Call me directly at 315-748-2524. But you also do the commercial property. So if I got a business, couple businesses, got to take one here, move it over there, do this, do that. Are you going to help me buy and sell my commercial property also? Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. What's my name again? I have no idea. Absolutely. But they need to know your name. So give it one more time. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. My phone number is 315-748-2524. Why don't you tell them your name one more time and that number so we can jot it down. This is Lawrence Papaleo. Call me or text me directly at 315-748-2524. 
All right, Coach, you've, you've heard from these young women about how they got there and how every single year it was one more step in the right direction. What have you seen out of this team and how did they come together to get to this point to say, I know what it feels like to not get to sectional. I know what it feels like to go to sectionals and not get it. I know what it, go, what it feels like to get to sectionals and win it, and but then lose after. And now I know what it means to get to sectionals, win a game, and lose in the final four. Every single year, they're pushing the term farther and farther. Yeah, I think that's, that's what it's all about, you know. You, you're never staying the same. You always want to get better. You always want to grow. Either going forwards or you're going backwards. So, you know, every, every time that we have a hiccup in the road, it's really, we try to turn it into a positive thing. You know, every setback we get is not a setback, it's a set forward. It's a way to look at yourselves, see what you can do better, and how you can move forward to be better. Because honestly, like, our goal, like, yeah, we, like our destination, we want to be the state champion. Like, that's our destination. But the bottom line is it's about being the best that we can possibly be. Achieving whatever potential is that we have as a, as a group of 15 kids, 16 kids. Like, whatever our potential is, that that's what we want to do. We want to reach that. And that's really, that's it. Like, that's what it's all about. So, like, when we, when we lose, like, that's, that's a nice little wake-up call to really point out our mistakes that we're making and improve on them and grow from them. And like, every single time that we watch film, like, there's not one thing that we see that we can't physically do that we can't, that we can't improve upon. And every single week this year, our kids got better. Every single week. Like we would show them something. And in anything we do in practice, they do it again. Like we, we do a drill in practice, then the next game. Because you know, I mean, they have a great carryover. And, and, uh, and they're hungry. You know what I mean? So it's really all about being the best that you can be. Not trying to win any championship. Although you want to. You know, it feels darn good. But I mean, hey, if we won states this year, and but we weren't the best basketball team we could be. Uh, we go look at ourselves in the mirror that night. You're not really liking who's staring back at you because you know you could have done more. You know, and that's really all about what is our full glass. Try and fill up our glass as much as we possibly can. And just focus on ourselves. And um, I'm really proud of these guys. And uh, you're gonna miss uh, driving down 695 every day, listening to Notorious B.I.G. getting pumped up for practice. <laughs> Oh, well, you, you got me there with that one. So, what notorious song are you listening to? And have you seen the movie All Eyes on Me with Tupac and Biggie yet? No, they're terrible, terrible role models for our youth. I just like to use them for motivation and then my car rides home. But um, uh, uh, definitely Victory with uh, Puff Daddy, Buster Rhymes, a few other characters in there. It's a good, good jam. Girls don't like it. Madison. Coach, Coach had a little bit of a celebration this year when you won sectionals. I said that he jumped higher than most people that I've seen in 32 years. How high did Coach seemingly jump? He says that the picture made it higher than it was. Did he get some air? Yeah, sure. <laughs> like four feet. I guess. Four feet. Four feet, that's like higher than Bailey. <laughs> Bring me into that game because CNS obviously has a very strong team year in and year out with Coach Smith. Just what you can say looking back to that game in sectionals and winning that game and the feeling of getting a victory not just to win sectionals but over a team that has so much talent and obviously scores like Amani Free that can get 30 in a game. Um, it was definitely like rough in the beginning and you can either like make excuses on the rest or you can try to fix what you're doing and I think obviously we chose to fix them and not just like make excuses and when we won it was just like really exciting because not only did we beat like CNF, I mean not only did we win sectionals but we beat CNF which are the good teams and Molly's back and like when we played her previously uh, like mid season I was like oh you guys only won because Molly wasn't playing and like I felt good because she was actually it was like their whole team all right, and, and Bailey, when you when you look back on the moments of this season, what is your favorite moment? What is that one that sticks out more than anything else? <laughs> um, the last minute and 57 seconds in Auslan. Uh, Auslan. Uh, 
making moves on the big girl. That was pretty great. Uh, and then pulling up NBA three. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, that was probably my favorite. <laughs> Went out with a bang. <laughs> Mackenzie, what, what was your favorite moment when you look back on this season? Probably beating Colony. Beating Colony? Yeah. Just bring me into to that game and why that one was so special. I mean, obviously it got you to the Final Four, but what is it about Colony that made that extra special? Well, I don't know. Like, we, we wanted to win regionals, and we just wanted to keep going, and my friend was on that team, so I kind of wanted to beat them even more. But, I don't know. I just think as a team we all played good. And like, I don't know, I thought it was pretty fun to win against them and just go to the state final four. What was the conversation like with your friend before the game? Did you talk before the game? Uh, no, we only really said hi. That was it? Yeah. On the court, you just shake hands. You're not friends until after the game. Yep. Fair enough. Did you say anything to her after? It's like a good game. <laughs> Fair enough. Maya, when you look back on this season and you look at these young ladies that you've been on the team with and the rest of them that are here in the audience. What is your memory that stands out more than anything else? Um, probably winning sectionals, but a few days ago actually, it's, it really doesn't have anything to do with our team, but Mackenzie sent a video that a JD player taken of Bailey making that three-pointer, and just knowing that the whole section was cheering for Bailey in that moment made me so happy, knowing that her senior year, last minute, last shot of that game, and the JD players were rooting for her. I mean, they've never like played with her or known her as a friend or anything like that, but just to know that they knew that she didn't play very much, so they wanted her to get the ball and have like a good last minute of her game. So that really stood out to me how they did that, and I enjoyed that. Was that kind of the plan in, in the closing moments of the game to make sure that Bailey got the ball and got an opportunity? <laughs> I mean, Madison and Mackenzie weren't in the game, so I brought the ball up, and I, I knew that when Bailey was open, I needed to give it to her because I just wanted, like, that's just how I wanted it to be. So when I took the ball to the right side, I knew that Bailey was open, so I gave it to her and pulled up for a three. <laughs> and, and when you hear that, that family atmosphere, yeah, give Bailey a round of applause. Right? <laughs> The family atmosphere of the section, Stafford and I had spoke about it, that as soon as you had defeated CNS, Eric Smith and you had spoken, he sent over film, and you said to me, if CNS won, you would help him, and if you guys won, he would help you. You stood by that word and wanted to help each other along and just, just have that connection of this community. You brought it up with JD, just what that means to you that the other teams that aren't making it and that are left at home watching, that they all kind of came together and said, you know what, for today, or in this moment, we're with the Wildcats. Yeah, it was a great feeling, especially when, well, the first time I realized how much the section like was a part of our family was when Beville actually tweeted to us and said that if they hear screaming it's from them coming from Syracuse while we were traveling to Albany and that meant a lot knowing that we had just beaten them two games prior yet they were still cheering for us because we were in the same section. Haley bring me into that the, the feeling that the Wildcat family got a whole lot bigger as you went on to the Final Four. I think one of the coolest moments in my season was seeing the whole JD team like coming out so early in our game against Colony just to root us on. And they could have been like doing a pre-game pump up or going over a game plan. Like they chose to root on Section Three, and I thought that was really cool. When when that happens, I mean, like Maya said, a team that you had played just a couple games before and won against that team. They wanted to be a part of this run. They wanted to cheer you on. Did you ever anticipate or expect that? Because it's a dogfight every single game, and obviously everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to get to sectionals. Everybody wants to move on from there. To know that people came together, did you ever get a sense for that in the community, or did it surprise you, kind of give you like that heartwarming moment of knowing that people care beyond just their team? I think we all knew that people cared, but like obviously when we're playing in our section, you want to try and be the best in the section, so it's kind of all business there, but then as soon as it gets like out into regionals and then states, you kind of just want your section to represent 
and do the best I can. So, and you want to be like a cheerleader for them and root them on. And I know we would have all done the same if it wasn't our team who was fortunate enough to move on. So yeah. Uh, coming from Haley and Mackenzie before we finish up the the first round here at the Wildcat. When you look back to Albany and look back to everything that this team has accomplished and what this team has done, who would you say had the biggest effect on you on the team? Which teammate or teammates of yours made you a better player and a better person? I would say all of them, like even in practices. For the kids that don't play like a lot, they just like work as hard, like just as hard as us, and they just make us better. Like Coach called them the scout team, but they honestly are like part of the reason why we won and we kept going. Because without them, like, we wouldn't have gotten that far. And then for, like, the starters, like, just, like, practicing all together. And just, like, without them, we can't get better. So I help being together, like, almost every day and just keep practicing. To give a shout-out to the scout team, just some of those young ladies that were on that team that helped you out and helped you prepare for these games. Like, I would say, like, the three kids that got moved up from JV. Like, I thought they were probably scared because when I was in eighth grade and I got moved up, I know Ness and I were probably a little frightened because everyone's older and, like, bigger. But they did good and they worked pretty hard, so I think it just helped for them. So I give them props for that. Madison, just, just what you could say in the same respect about some of the unsung heroes on the team. A lot of focus on, obviously, the, the starters, what you did, what your sister did, what everybody sitting here did. But to some of those people on the scout team that didn't get the exposure, just what you could say about what they meant to the team and what they meant to you as well. Um, I think everybody's just as important as like, everyone. And the scout team especially, they made us better, both offens offensively and defensively. And especially the three kids that got pulled up from JV, they stepped up to like the big challenge. And they just do whatever was best for us. They wouldn't complain or back down like if something happened. They just did the best they could and helped us. And coach, we're going to wrap up this first round with you. What impressed you the most about this year's team? Oh, that's a that's a tough question. Uh, there's a lot that impressed me. Um, I mean, you know, I just think the way that we ended things. Is uh, about as good as way you can end it because honestly, in Double A, there's going to be one team that finishes their season with a win. One team out of everybody, one team's going to finish with a win, and uh, that wasn't us this year. But the positive thing is, in that last game, in that those last moments, we had Bailey uh, lift us up when we were all down and give us something to cheer about. So even though we lost that last 10 seconds of the game. We're all standing up on the bench. We're all cheering, we're all excited, and we're all happy. And in that moment, she brought us joy, like she brings us joy all the time. And uh, you know, the kid works so hard, that's why she's, she's everybody's favorite. She's just a sweetheart, she works her tail off, never really gets to play. Um, just like they're saying about all the kids on the scout team, they work their tail off, but they never get to play. And the kids, just, the kids just know their roles, they buy into the team, they buy into one another, they care about each other, and uh, you know, it's a great journey. It's one thing if you win sections or you win regionals and you don't enjoy it. Um, these guys, these guys enjoy the ride, and, uh, and that's what it's, it's really all about. You're gonna do something special. You might as well enjoy it while you do it. So, been uh, a great season and uh, lots to be grateful for. They come in from Stafford's Freeder. So we have Bailey, Madison, Stafford, Mackenzie, Maya, Haley, and myself, Dan Tortora. We'll take a step aside, and as we do here every single month at the Wildcat with teams from West Genesee, the second round is when I get to throw all the girls and coach on the hot seat in rapid fire. And the final round, just to be fair, I let you all put me on the hot seat as well. Maya said she didn't do her homework, so I give her a few minutes to get it done. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting this team. We appreciate it very much. It's a wake-up call, Fast Break. Utica Pizza Company spells family. Your family. My family. 
their family. The recipes that they have shared with each other throughout the years and have now been so gracious to share them with us. I can sit here and talk with you about all the great things that are on the menu, but we'd be here forever. So let me say this. Utica Pizza Company is second to none. And now you can bring it home with you and you can dine in in the restaurant. UticaPizzaCompany.com will give you all the information that you need. And let me say, these Utica Greens, they're the best. Utica Pizza Company. Call them and place your order at 315-214-3060. That's 315-214-3060. Families break bread at Utica Pizza Company. Gear up with the real deal at Dreisig Apparel. Creating what people are going to see and learn about you before they even meet you. Gear up for what you need for your team, business, or event. To look professional, look good, and feel good, outfit yourself at DreisigApparel.com. That's D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G Apparel.com. The only place to gear up with the real deal. What's the universal language of a fan? Clapping your hands. With Fan Hands, the ultimate sports fan accessory, find your team color, slip them on, and start cheering on your favorite team with 11 different colors always in stock on FanHands.com, where you'll find the ultimate sports fan accessory. Real fans wear Fan Hands. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, live on location right here at the Wildcats Sports Club in Camillus with the West Genesee Wildcats girls basketball team. We have Bailey Madison, head coach Stafford Streeter, as well as Mackenzie, Maya, and Haley, and myself, Dan Tortora. We are going to mix it up this time, so Rapid Fire is going to flip-flop back and forth. I'm going to ask questions, and you're going to ask questions at the same time. So instead of having... It's set where I'm going, and then you're going. We're going to mix them up back and forth. So, Mackenzie, you get to ask me the first question. Oh, we're going you first? We're going to go back and forth. All right, Mackenzie, what do you got? I need a couple seconds to think. You need a couple seconds. All right, Haley, go ahead. I'm just going to pass it off to Maya. All right, go ahead. What do you you got? You have something written down, okay. All right. What's your biggest pet peeve? Oh, man. My biggest pet peeve. I don't like when people drive without putting their signal on. That's one. What's another pet peeve? People that are hypocritical. And I guess another pet peeve would be people that hate on Syracuse basketball just because they feel like they need to. So, And they, sound, they seem to be really dumb after a while, you know what I mean? It comes to a point where you just got to admit that you're wrong and your bracket's busted and it's going to be okay. So I would say admit when you're wrong, don't be a hypocrite, and and put your turn signal on for sure. <laughs> All right, Haley, I'm going to ask you a question now. <laughs> if you could be any superhero, who would it be and why? <laughs> any superhero. Um, Wonder Woman. Okay. <laughs> Why, why She's kind of the only one I know. So. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I like it. All right. All right, Coach. You can ask me a question. What do you got? All right, man. Who you got going to the Final Four? My Final Four in my bracket are not all in good shape, as, as many are. So... I would say Villanova's still got a good shot, for sure, to get to the championship game. It's going to be interesting, because on the left side of the bracket in the south and in the west, the ones and the twos are gone. So the highest seed that can get in is a three, and there's a lot of trouble that's going to happen in that. So I like the fact that it's going to be different. But if you're asking me what I would like to see now, if I had to choose now with 16 left, I'd love Loyola Chicago to stun the world. Because they have a wonderful 90, I think 98-year-old woman supporting them, a sister on the team. So her being, her being 98 reminds me of my grandmother who lived to be 100 and a half. So I'd say I want Loyola to do it for her. I want Syracuse to do it for the haters. I, I want Villanova to do it because I want Syracuse and Villanova to play each other because I miss that. And who do I want out of the West bracket? 
I want the Gonzaga Bulldogs. I love I love Gonzaga. If, if anybody's gonna win, that you know people here maybe aren't fans of, you got to cheer for Gonzaga. So I'd like to see that. All right, Bailey, I'm gonna ask you a question. Everybody says you're their favorite person. Who's your favorite person in the world? In the world. In the world. Never gonna say I'm Uh, my sister Kaylee. She's the funniest person I know. I could be having a terrible day. Instantly makes me smile. So yeah, that's it. All right, Madison. I'm gonna ask you a question. What do I got here? Where, what in your life, what place, what people are you with, what situation are you in where you talk the most? Uh, probably on the bus. On the bus? Like before games, like I scream. <laughs> you just you just randomly scream. Up. Yeah, I'll sing. Okay. Young Pinch. No, just no, none of that. Young Pinch. No. <laughs> He's like no. <laughs> all right, all right, Mackenzie, you got to ask me a question. I gave you time. I gave you time. My question is, can you ask me a question? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are you running for any type of political office coming up? Yes. You are. Okay. All right, Mackenzie, what can I ask you here? What is your favorite thing about your sister? I don't think I have one. Uh, uh, I like how we can like fight and just hate each other for a couple of minutes, and then like after we'll just hang out. Or like, okay. we'll be like, oh, do you want to go on like a bike ride or something? Or like play this. <laughs> Uh, play basketball and we're fine. Okay. We usually just end up making fun of each other after, so. <laughs> so you get in a fight with each other, and then two minutes later, it's like, you want to go play basketball and hang out for the rest of the day. Yep. It's as easy as it goes. Yep. Who wins most fights? Me, for sure. You, for sure. Okay. All right, Madison. What's your favorite thing about your sister? And part B, does she win most of the fights? Oh. <laughs> um, Whenever I'm mad, I can just hit it on her, and she'll hit me back. Like, I don't know, it's good. Like, we could just fight. <laughs> I don't know. Her sarcasm, even though it's really annoying sometimes, but I don't know. Yeah, it's funny sometimes. Does she does she win most or not? Oh, uh, she's a lot more mean. So yeah. <laughs> like she doesn't. She never stops. Like one time we got in a fight in the hallway, and she I like came at her, and she just kind of slammed me down. But I'll stop okay, there. That's not I'll stop there. <laughs> that's a lie. Fair enough. Okay, Bailey, you asked me one. What do you got? What's your favorite part about doing these types of interviews? My favorite part about doing these, getting to know people in the community. You know, I, I think it's it's very different. It's one thing West Genesee going as far as you did. And it's another thing getting to know you and then going out to a game and then talking to Stafford, but texting almost every week back and forth and different things. So I, I think it, it brings like a vested interest in it. It makes you care more. You know, I want to see everybody in this community do well because this is where I came from. But it means so much more when I get to know you all and your personalities. So when I see that, you know, Madison did something good or Maya had a big game or, or you know, something that Haley said, you know, as something in her life that means something to her resonates with me or your big moment or when Mackenzie's joking around and whatnot or when Coach and I are texting back and forth, those all make me care about the team that so much more. And it makes me want to see you do well in whatever you do in your life. So my favorite thing about being here is getting to know you, in all honesty. I would say that. So, all right, I'm going to throw it to Maya. Go ahead and ask me something. Oh, Yeah. What's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? <laughs> yeah. I got to think. I don't know what type of fish this was, but my friend from, from Africa cooks fish differently and the fish looked like he cooked it for a really long time, and it looked like he didn't cook it at all. And he said that if you eat the eyes, they're supposed to give you wisdom. 
and I 100% ate one of the eyes, and I felt like I went on a journey <laughs> that maybe some people that try some psychedelic things go on, but I don't know, I, I feel like I saw the end of the world in the beginning, I feel like I got to know God better. <laughs> I feel like I, I know the, the, what life is all about, and I know the secret to everything, and then I forgot it five minutes later, so. But it was a good moment. All right, Haley. <laughs> what is the best gift you've ever received? Um, that's a tough one. <laughs> Or the best one you ever gave? Um, I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't, I like, like hanging out with my family, like, surprise visits from them. They're always probably, like, my favorite thing. Okay. All right, fair enough. All right, Stafford, you're on the hot seat. Let's see what we got here, Stafford. What is one thing that you would go back and change in your life if you could? Uh, well, uh, can I say uh, Saturday morning? <laughs> um, you know, I, I really think that you know you, you can't really want to change anything because you are who you are because of your your failures and your triumphs. So you know, I it's kind of take a weird weird answer for you, but uh, I change absolutely nothing. Uh, I think it's all made me who I am, and uh, you know that's what it's all about. Who you who you are? You are who you are from what you go through. So. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good with the way things have shaped out. Okay, fair enough. Hi, right, Madison. What do you got for me? What's your biggest regret in life? My biggest regret in life. I think I got asked this recently by the last team that was here. And I had to sit and think for like three minutes. I don't, I don't feel like I have one. I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. Uh, I do believe in God, so I believe you have to make up for those mistakes. But, you know, I, in 32 years, I don't think that my family would say that I have anything to regret. And I, I've learned, like, kind of going off what Stafford said, I've learned from every misstep. And I've got a lot of comedy from some of the missteps. So I would just say I didn't, I didn't regret anything. I learned from it. And if I can give anybody any advice, if you give your best effort every day and things don't work out, it's not a regret. It's supposed to be a learning lesson. So I would say that. All right, Bailey, I got, I got one for you. Okay. This is a three-part question. And since you were not here the last time, I think some of the girls had this one. I'm going to throw this one your way. Three parts. You can go anywhere in the world. Where do you go? You can take one person that you know. And you could take one celebrity. So where do you go? Who do you take that you know and what celebrity? Uh, I'd go to Italy. Uh, probably with my mom. And who would we take? Uh, well, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite celebrity is Taylor Swift. So she has a lot of money, so that'd be pretty nice. <laughs> uh, well, fair enough. Why, why Italy? And have you been to Italy before? No, I haven't been to Italy, and um, I'm Italian, and I really like food, so, yeah. yep. From like Neto, I, I couldn't tell that that was Italian oh, at all. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom always said if it ends in a vowel, typically, yeah. you're Italian. All right. All right, Mackenzie. <laughs> all right, Mackenzie. If you could switch places with anybody for a day, sitting at this table, who would it be? Paid to have fun, so I guess I'll do that. Okay. Paid to have fun, living the dream every day. It is though, I mean, when you do what you love, you are having a good time. So, that's very true. So I'm gonna go to Maya. What's one thing that you wanna do in your life before it's all said and done? 
I'd like to change someone else's life, one way or another. Okay. I mean, but, I'd like to go into the medical field, so okay. being able to do that every day would be an honor. Okay, and you want to be doctor? You want to? Yeah, I don't really know, but the medical field would be somewhere in the medical field yeah. to change somebody's life for the better. All right, fair enough. Okay, Haley, you get to ask me one since I've asked you a couple. Um, what would your dream vacation be? Oh, Italy and Spain, hands down, because I have family in both still, and we actually, because of Facebook, I know that social media can be not a great thing, but my family reached out to me from Spain and actually sent a picture of uh, my cousin when she was little, like four years old, with my grandmother because they came to visit her in Brooklyn. And the thought of being able to go and return the favor and go to Spain would be awesome. And it's crazy, they've never met any, like they never met me before, or my dad or anything like that. And they said, if you come to Spain, all you have to do is get your plane ticket. We'll feed you, we'll put you in a house, you're set. And it's, I mean, it's crazy the hospitality that you get from family that's so far away. So I would say that I want to take them up on that for sure. All right, Stafford. I'm going to let everybody else, uh, we're, I'm going to ask you each one more, and you all going to each ask me one more. So, Stafford, here's your final question for me. What do you got? What is your, your favorite sport to broadcast, and why? I'm not saying this because you're sitting here. I could broadcast back... If I close my eyes and just listen to the sneakers and the ball, I can tell you what's happening. Like I, I had a basketball at three years old. I grew up playing. I organized at seven. And then I went to college, and I wasn't a D1 player. I'm not going to you know, sit here and say I was. I got recruited D3, and I decided not to go out the first year. I was coming off of a bad coach, unfortunately, so I wanted to take a break. And the coach was like, oh, you know, just come practice with us, get a feel for the team. And I was like, I'll see, you know, I'll see how I feel. And I ended up, I, was, I got to school at the end of August. Beginning of November, I got a phone call. Ten minutes before, the, eight minutes before the game. Dan, the guy that's supposed to be broadcasting the game didn't show up, and he doesn't think he wants to do it anymore. Can you come? I knew no names, no pronunciation. I didn't know Mary Wood's team where I went to school. I didn't know the other team. I ran there, I sat down, I did the show, tried to let my personality shine, tried to make people laugh. After that moment, they said, we want to put it on TV and radio and simulcast it. I didn't let go of it for four years, and the show is 14 years old today. So I would say broadcasting basketball because that's what I, that's what I did, you know? I did broadcast volleyball, and I will say that's one of the most interesting things in my life that I've ever done. I learned a lot of terminology that I never thought existed, so I'll say that. All right, Madison. Here's your final question from me. It's tough here. If you could give any piece of advice to the rest of the world, what would you say to the world today? Just like do what you want and if people don't agree with you, they don't have to be in your life. Like, just do what you want. Fair enough. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna send my. You're, you can ask me a question now, because we both have one final around this table, so we'll do it that way. What do you got? What are your hobbies without like other than talking and making people laugh? <laughs> other than talking and make a, making people laugh, uh, I would say that one of my most favorite things to do, and my my wife can attest to this, is going home laying on the couch with the dog and just sitting and watching any episode of shows that I like. I don't usually get to sit down. I don't usually get to take a break. So when I do at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm watching Netflix or something like that. I like to watch things that make me laugh. So whatever's out there that can make me laugh, I say, bring it on. So thank you for that. All right, Bailey. What do I got for you here? Bailey, what can you say, and, and I, my mom snuck in here. My mom wanted to come out and see one of the shows. Can we give my mom a round of applause? Give my mom some love. Mom, how tall are you? Are you 4'10"? 4'10". Four foot nothing. okay. So Bailey's got, Bailey's got an inch of height. Bailey, 
what would you say to people? Because in the world we live in today, you know, me, I'm five, seven, five, eight. I was always told whenever I went out for a basketball team growing up, you know, you're, I was five foot three at the time, five foot whatever, and they said, you're not tall enough, you're not this, you're not that, you can't. So I always took to people that, you know, played the sport that were five foot three, like Spud Webb, or Bugsy Bogue, Spud Webb that was five seven. What can you say about living your dreams, having big moments like you had recently here, and not caring what other people say? Like with basketball, like how? with anything, oh. but just with having somebody say, "No, you can't, Bailey," and you said, oh. "You know what? Yeah, I can." Well, my mom's always told me you can do anything you put your mind to, and that really is true. Is true. Um, no one can tell you you can't because you put your mind to it, you can do it. Like you just have to have determination and guts and do it. And that's why your mom's coming to Italy with you. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bailey, what's your final question for me? Uh, what's your favorite color? Green. Green and orange. So Michigan State Syracuse was kind of weird. <laughs> but I did wear an under... No, see, and I didn't let this out yet. I told Stafford, I didn't tell anybody else. I wore an undershirt that had orange tones to it. And I wore socks to the Syracuse TCU game and then washed them and wore them to the Michigan State game, and now I have to wash them and wear them to the Duke game. So, I'm not a superstitious guy, but I was like, well, I mean, I kinda, I kinda have to be, I guess, in this case. All right, Mackenzie. Let me think about this for a second. I gotta get creative with you, because you keep everybody on their toes. You got here, Mackenzie. If I, if I asked you, you could do one of three things for the team. You could throw a party for the team. You could cook for the whole team. Or you could DJ for the team. What would you do and why? Uh, probably throw a party. Okay, why that? Are you good at it? Uh, no, I'm just too lazy to cook or DJ. Okay. So, <laughs> I think... <laughs> A well, party would just be more fun because everyone's just together. Okay. So yeah. What's your final question for me? If you had three choices to do for the team, would you cook for them, DJ for them, or throw a party? <laughs> I would cook because I'm a good cook. You sure? I am positive. I know I could cook. All right, Haley. Here's my final one for you. What is your proudest moment of being a part of this team? Don't cry. You always ask me hard ones. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably just knowing like that I have friendships that'll last way longer than when I graduate in June 16th. Like I'm already looking forward. <laughs> like I'm already looking forward to coming back and seeing the team next year and keeping in touch with all of them because I made like a lot of really close connections in a short amount of time. So I think that's pretty special. Okay. What's your final question for me? Um, do you prefer sunsets or sunrises? Oh, God. I'm going to say sunsets because I'm always up through the whole day until almost the sunrise. So I guess I guess I would say sunset. No, in, a, in all honesty, uh, when I was down in Florida and we were at St. Pete's Beach, which is right near Tampa, I got to take pictures of the sun right when it looks like it's a, it, like it touches the water before it dips completely. And those were some of my favorite times is watching the sunset. So I'll say sunset. All right, Maya. My final question for you. Who has been the biggest influence on your life? My parents. How so? They're always there for me, supporting me, whatever I do. They take me to all my tournaments over the summer. My mom was the first one I hugged when we won sectionals. There's actually a picture of her crying. <laughs> and then, um, actually, it was reversed. Last game, I started crying, and she was on the sideline and gave me another hug and said, like, you had a great season, and there's nothing to be sad about. Like, just keep your head up. All right, I know you're looking at your phone. What's your final question <laughs> for me? Um, if you could trade lives with anyone for a day, who would it be and why? I would trade lives with my grandmother. No, I'm going to try not to cry. Okay. I would, I would, and I mean that. I would trade lives with my grandmother that lived to be a hundred and a half because she, sorry, she saw pretty much everything. Uh, she, I mean, she was born 
during World War One. So I would just want to see the world through her eyes, how it changed. I, I would want to know what it would be like to live as many years as she did and love as she did. And I would want to know how she took the world that beat her up and she never punched the world back. The way that she hit the world was she smiled, she'd go be nice to somebody else, she would hug somebody. I can't look at my mouth at this moment. <laughs> she would, uh, she always knew what to say and she knew how to say it. So if I could trade places with anybody, it would be next to, in my opinion, next to Jesus Christ, the best person that I ever knew walked the earth, and that is my grandmother. I would trade places with her in a heartbeat. And Grandma, I made it through without crying. Yes. <laughs> All right, Stafford, what's your final question for me? And we'll wrap this thing up. Uh, what do you think is the best part about uh, March Madness? What I think is the best part about March Madness? The madness. <laughs> the craziness. I, I think the best part of March Madness is, because I, you know, I make the decisions to the best of my ability, but I'm impartial. If I think Syracuse is going to lose, I, I pick them to lose. If I think... You know, Duke is good here, and this and that, I'm going to pick him. I mean, I don't, I don't do it on a personal feeling. So, you know, I would say embrace the madness. The teams like Loyola Chicago, Nevada, UMBC, beating a number one seed, and now they're 1-135 one against them. It's not a totally defeated record. I, I would say that the greatest thing about it is the run that I've gotten to have. You know, in 2013, I went to the Final Four. And I was owning my own business, running my company, and my credential had my name on it. And in 2016, my credential had my name on it in the Final Four. And now in 2018, my credential has my name on it. I'm going to Omaha, Nebraska. And I, I just, I couldn't be more honored to do what I do. I mean, like Mackenzie said, she, she would trade places because I get to do fun stuff. It, it's true. You know, it's a lot of hard work. I work more hours than I ever worked for any boss, but if you love what you do and you're determined in life to make the world a better place, like Maya said, you want to change somebody's life for the better, I think that waking up every day and doing things my way to the best of my ability are hopefully going to make somebody else feel better and make them feel like they can stand in front of the biggest companies in the world and the, the biggest obstacles and be successful. Because I sat in a room yesterday with ESPN, who I worked with, Fox, Yahoo, all the newspapers, people that are, that are known all over the world. I sat in the same room, interviewed Jim Beheim, and went to the same locker room. There's no greater feeling than that. So bring on the madness. And with that being said, I want to end today's show by thanking all the parents, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the, the, the friends, the colleagues, the neighbors, the alumni, the fellow classmates, the teammates of West Genesee. Give yourselves a round of applause because you deserve it. And please give a round of applause to these young women who have made this fun for me. Bailey Legnetto, as well as Madison Smith, Stafford Spreeder, Mackenzie Smith, Maya Case, Haley Collins. I can honestly say that you young ladies have made this year and last year better for me than it was before I met you. So thank you for that. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Hi, this is Kira from Looking Glass Events, where we're always giving you a reason to celebrate. Whether you have a small business, large business, personal event, or a wedding, we are available to plan and coordinate your dream event to life. Every detail, every step, Looking Glass Events is working with you all the way. Call us at 315 315- 702-4653 that's 315-702-4653 or contact us through our website lgweddingsandevents.com Looking Glass Events giving you a reason to celebrate The Penn and Trophy Center on 111 East Willow Street in Syracuse, New York, has been making memories for Central New York for over 60 years. It has the trophies for your teams, and when you walk in there, it's so much more than just that. When you walk into the Penn and Trophy Center, you are immersed in the reality that anything can be customized, anything can be engraved, whether it's for your anniversary, your wedding, your bar mitzvah, your birthday party, whatever you want to do with that memory, that watch from grandpa, or that bracelet from mom, or that wedding 
wedding ring that's been passed down through your family. If you want to get something engraved with a memory to last a lifetime, the Pennant Trophy Center, 111 East Willow Street in Syracuse, New York, where memories are made and where memories last a lifetime. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. I want to appreciate and thank once again West Genesee's girls basketball team for the West Genesee Wildcats who made it to the state's final four round after winning their second sectional championship in as many years. So God bless and, you know, much appreciation for all that they do and for all the teams in the community and for everybody that we've gotten to spend some time with and for the things that are coming up here in the future with Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora live on location. So I'm very, very excited I, I love the fact of, and you, you heard the uh, young ladies ask me just what it meant to me, you know, to do an event like this, what my favorite part was of doing an event with the team. And you heard me say that it's it's getting to know them. It's being around them. It's it's speaking with them. It's, it's knowing who they are and what they're about and what they stand for. And, you know, that goes a long way because it's one thing to just look at a team and go, oh, that's cool. Yeah, West Genesee. Yeah, okay. They... They made it that far good for them. And it's another thing to know the team, to, you know, be able to meet Bailey Legnano, who has no idea how much, you know, of an impression she made on me because I was always the short kid playing basketball at five foot eight. And, you know, that was something that I had to fight my whole life was, you know, I'm all, you know, I'm good at this. I know that I'm good at this. I know that I could do this. And I wasn't the first guy off the bench. I wasn't a starter, but I tried my butt. I, I worked my butt off. And so to see somebody be celebrated like her, it just really, it goes a long way with me. And to see such a young lady who is finishing up her time in high school have such a good head on her shoulders and maturity and appreciation and love for herself as well as a sense of humor, you know, that goes that goes a long way. To Maya Case, who, you know, you sit and you ask her a question, and it's like she knew that the question was coming. She's good at answering it. She's good at speaking her mind and, you know, getting down to the nitty-gritty of what she took away from something and, and what something meant to her. And, you know, I had an opportunity to spend some time, you know, meet her parents and whatnot, and, and that went a long way, and, and to meet her grandparents. And, you know, when I said to her, I said, uh, the last show that we did at the Wildcat, I said, do me a favor. I said, when you go to visit your grandparents, when you go see them and you give them a hug and you give them a kiss and you walk out the door, walk back in, give them another 500 hugs and kisses. And then you, then, then go. I said, if you don't, you'll regret it. And so that just goes such a long way and means so much. And it was great to, it's great to meet grandparents and parents and aunts and uncles and whatnot. So You know, it just, it means a lot and it, it really does, you know, it connects this show with the community more than just being like, Hey, I'm a show on the radio. You should listen to it. It's, Hey, I'm a show who cares about you and wants to see you do well. And even if I never meet you, I'm praying for you every day that you have a good life, that you smile, that you're happy, that you attain your dreams, that you help other people to do good in their life. And that you never forget that there's somebody up there. I call him God, whatever you call him, but there's somebody up there that loves you. You know, to Mackenzie and Madison Smith, who I joke with, because whenever we do these 
roundtable discussions, they don't always say a lot, but when they do, it it means a lot. You know, and Mackenzie got going a little bit here in this show and, you know, just spoke about the season and spoke about her sister and joked around and whatnot. I mean, it goes a long way. And these young women, Mackenzie and Madison, they did so much for the team and, you know, they they have that maturity to take the team on their back and do what they need to do. I mean, there's so many women on this team that have worked so very diligently as a team. It's not one person. It's not two people. And But I will say that the two people, Mackenzie and Madison, they're always fun. And, and after everything was done, you know, their mom came over and they're like, can you take a picture with us? Because we'd like to take, you know, we'd like to take a picture with the two of us. And, you know, those are the moments that I'll never forget because, you know, that hopefully means that whatever I've done, in the last few months has done something positive in their life. And if you can give someone positivity as a gift, there's no greater gift than that. To Haley Collins, who is so kind. And it's funny, I didn't I didn't know her before we did these shows, but she's such a kind like when she talks and she and I remember going on search retreats at Marywood University. It was it's called Search. And, you know, just kind of sitting around and and hearing people speak about life and how you can like help one another and do better by you know, do better for yourself and whatnot. And when I hear her speak, I think about that. I think like I could run a retreat with with Haley someday, and we could help people be good to themselves, and we can help ourselves to grow and, and advance. I just I feel like she has that spirit that can help you to smile and and know that it's going to be okay. And calming people in this world, and you know people that can just come from the heart every time, you know, that's seen as a weakness by some people. I think it's one of the greatest strengths. So I, I give it up to, to Haley for that. And, you know, whenever a young lady or a young man walks by in high school and says, good luck on all your future endeavors, and I hope everything goes well with you from here on out, I'm looking at her going, how do you even know to speak that way? You know, you've you've obviously been raised right, and, you know, to wish me luck in my life when I'm here to, you know, wish it to you guys, you know, that, that, that goes a long way. And it's, it's always nice to hear a kind word from somebody. They say that there's, you know, you can be too nice or too loving or too caring. None of that stuff exists. People that say that have, have some hangups and some issues going on when, you know, I will never say that my wife loves me too much or my mom is too caring or my, you know, my little girl, Lily is, is too loving and too, too, spunky too happy you know those are the things in life that you can always take more of and you appreciate what you got and then then to Stafford I mean this really has been something amazing I did not know Stafford before this season we had never spoken and I reached out to him I told him I wanted to have the girls basketball team at the Wildcat and he was like yeah man let's do this we sat down and we spoke and I told him, I said, after having a conversation sitting, because he always sits to my right during these shows of the Wildcat, and I said, you know, I, f I honestly feel like I've been sitting here talking with somebody I've known for a couple years, you know, at least. And it's just very comfortable. It's very fun. I feel the need to always thank him when I'm around him because I feel like, you know, he's just a very welcoming guy. He's super excited. He's passionate. He's not afraid to be, and I think that that's great. And I think that coaches that aren't afraid to be who they are and that work really hard toward being successful and that care about people, those are the ones that win. And, yeah, you know, there's coaches that go out there and aren't the greatest and they win, but it's sweeter and it's and it's just it's more meaningful when the, when the good ones go out there and do things the right way. So I, I appreciate Stafford, and I really, you know, he just, he does. He keeps in touch with me. I keep in touch with him. And those text messages are always much appreciated. So thank you to Stafford for just, you know, letting me know that, you know, that things are appreciated and, and, and just the positivity. It really goes a long way. He's not a coach. He's like, yep, yep. What do I need to do? Be there for an hour. Okay, great. Thanks. You know, it's, and they stayed longer than they were supposed to. So I apologize to the parents and the aunts and the uncles and the brothers and sisters and, and, the, and to the girls, if they had homework and whatnot, I appreciate you extending a little bit longer with me, and, and I thank you for that. And I apologize if that messed up the night at all, but 
you know, I really do appreciate. None of the girls complained. Coach didn't, and it just it just meant a lot to me. So, and thank you to Danny and Heather Tome, to Nikki at the bar, to the entire staff at the Wildcat Sports Pub. If you haven't been there, it's time to go, and you need to do that today. Go to 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, right over the hill from West Genesee High School, and right off of Hinsdale Road if you're coming the other way. So go into that Home Depot Plaza, and the Wildcat is 3680 Milton Avenue in that Home Depot Plaza in Camillus, New York. Big shout-out and big ups to the Wildcat Sports Pub, and a big thank you to everybody that was a part of it, and to all the young women, as well as head coach Stafford Spreeder, for being a part of these shows and to take an idea that I had and bring it to life. We'll take a step aside, and we will come back speaking on Syracuse basketball with Dale Shackelford in just a moment. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Proud to be here with you, and thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and with all of our special engagement shows like we had in Brooklyn on a Saturday and like we just did recently in Detroit on Sunday, I want to thank Brooklyn, New York, as well as Dayton, Ohio, and Detroit, Michigan, for welcoming Wake Up Call into the community and for doing the shows live on location, which will be something that I'll remember forever. So I appreciate it very much. Speaking on being in those areas, that's all having to do with Syracuse basketball coverage. And former Syracuse basketball player who has spent the last three years speaking on the team with me regularly is Dale Shackelford. So when it came to coming in this week, the first person to come onto this broadcast and give his thoughts had to be Dale because I respect him as a friend, respect him as a person. And, you know, when I have a mic on one end and there's a mic on the other end, Dale and I are the ones talking about this team more often than not. So, Dale, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Dan. Not too bad. Just uh, you know, waiting for the, uh, the sun to rise a little bit more and warm it up a little bit. But other than that, I'm okay. <laughs> And we speak of the sun rising, which might take a little bit of time here in Syracuse. However, Syracuse is rising at the most opportune time. I would, I have said, and I stick by that the they're pay, they're playing their best basketball right now. Their defense looks very strong offensively. You know, they could always be better, but they're doing enough. And I think against Arizona State as well as against. TCU and then Michigan State, in my opinion, they're playing their best basketball right now. Would it be safe to say that when you look back on the season that this is the best that they've done in your eyes? Well, you know, basically it's a new season. And, uh, you know, they started a new season off great. Um, you know, they finished out their regular season and their conference, uh, you know, as, as strong as they could. And now that uh, the NCAA tournament has given them an uh, unexpected invite, uh, you know, they're taking it as it's a whole new season and uh, it's a chance for them to show people that, uh, you know, they really have the talent and the capability of uh, winning games. And when we see this team, you know, it's funny to me. I, I kind of, you know, I laugh it off and let it roll off my shoulders. But you hear, you know, people that are quote unquote gurus of basketball and pundits and experts and yada, yada, whatever, that are saying that Syracuse is boring. They hate watching them. It's, you know, they're not doing enough. They're not making the games fun. I mean, I, I sat in a media room and had to listen to people say that watching Syracuse was brutal. And my response was, well, they're winning. So I don't really think they care. 
What did you take away? I mean, what have you taken away from the fact that when you turn on the TV, seemingly the majority of people, even though Syracuse is in the Sweet 16, can't just say, you know what, I was wrong, let's move forward. Well, you know, Syracuse is playing their type of game. And, you know, everybody's game is the same. Everybody's game is not appealing to someone else. Uh, you know, UConn as women have beaten teams by 60, 70 points. And, uh, you know, if that's exciting to people, then, uh, you know, they're watching the, the wrong sport. Uh, you would like to see a game where, you know, it's, it's competitive and, uh, you know, People are making the other uh, players, uh, you know, not play in their comfort zone. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, Syracuse's offense is a little stagnant. But, you know, guess what? You know, when they need a basket, they've seemingly been able to get one. And, uh, you know, they're keeping the other teams from getting one. So, you know, the, the best advice I can give them is, uh, you know, turn it off and look at the final result and you don't have to watch the game. Speaking here with Syracuse Orange men's basketball alum Dale Shackelford. Dale, to see what this team has been doing lately, Marek Dolajai, he has attacked, uh, last two games especially, he's gone after it in Detroit. He took a three to beat the shot clock and pushed the, you know, just pushed the ball up in the last second, kicked his leg out, hit the three. He had one three-pointer in 34 games prior to that. He's been attacking inside, pump faking and, and going after it. Just what you could say about the Dolajai factor, because he is not looking to pass the ball off. He is, more often than not right now, taking shots, trying to get himself to the basket, and trying to make smart plays, which, in my opinion, is opening the game up right now. Well, I think it's about time. Uh, you know, he's, he's getting a little selfish, uh, and, and he should be. Uh, you know, he has a lot of opportunities there to score, to shoot the ball, and he, he's been passing them up uh, most of the season. So, I mean, this is a great time for him to shine and show people that, uh, you know, he is capable of, uh, you know, an offensive style of, of play. And, uh, you know, he's proven it. And I, you know, I, I take my hat off to him that, uh, you know, right now at this part of the season, uh, you know, he's not afraid to do that. And, you know, hopefully he'll continue to do that. Are you surprised that this is when it's happening, that, that this is the time where he doesn't really care what people think of his jump shot? He doesn't care if he's going to get yelled at or not? I mean, he is attacking right now, and we've been waiting all season to kind of see if he would just quiet out the noise. And, and even from Bayheim, you know, when Bayheim was saying, we have these guys that could shoot the ball and then, you know, the rest of them, whatever. You know, even with that, he's not afraid to go after his shot now. Is it surprising to you that it's happening at the time that Syracuse needs it most, that it, that it's taken him to this point to really hunker down and say, you know what, I have to do something offensively. Well, I'm not. I'm not really surprised. At it. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, happy for him that uh, you know he's taking on that initiative to say that, you know, this is a, a good time to do it because if we don't win the ball games, then we're done for the year. And I don't think any of those guys uh, feel that they should be finished right now. Uh, I think that they all feel that you know they've got something to prove to people that they do belong in the tournament. And, you know, that's why they're playing the way they're playing is because, you know, they believe that they belong there and, you know, they're trying to, you know, prove to themselves and to all the doubters that, um, you know, Syracuse is a good team. It's just a point of, uh, you know, we've had some of our uh, bad spells throughout the season. Uh, they were in a lot of close games that uh, they could have won or could have won either way. And, you know, now that, uh, you know, they're one of those games. So it's swinging back Syracuse's way. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the best time of season for it to happen. Speaking here with Dale Shackelford, Syracuse Orange men's basketball alum. Dale, Pascal Chuku, I mean, we look at a guy, seven foot two. It's Hack a Chuku at this point. People are fouling him, saying he's seven foot two. There's no way in hell he's going to keep making these free throws. And he has, and he's done it at the end of games, and he's made it happen, and he's taking care of business at the line. Just what you could say about, you know, him kind of, you know, with Marek being an X Factor, Pascal being an X Factor in, in the situation of, you know, we. We don't have terrible free throw shooters. I mean, Syracuse has gone through seasons where the whole team, 70%, that really nobody is taking care of business. But when you foul the biggest guy on Syracuse's team, he's the one that you, you kind of trust the most at this point, or one of the guys that you trust the most. Just what you could say about what he has been, because he's been critiqued for so many different things, yet I've seen him be tenacious to get after the basketball. I've seen him run after and chase the basketball, and he doesn't mind getting fouled because he's confident in his shot when he takes that shot from the charity stripe. Well, it's another uh, situation where you know, I think you know, he feels that uh, you know, the pressure's been on him all year to perform, 
And, you know, right now it's a situation where it's do or die. He's putting everything on the line. I mean, sometimes he can't even get up and down the floor. Uh, you know, it seems like his knees are so bad, his back's bad. But uh, it's good that he has the confidence in himself to say, okay, you know, I'm, after practice I'm shooting about 300 foul shots at the end of practice or, you know, I, I can't leave until I make so many in a row. And, you know, I think that's really helping him. And he's really concentrating on, on doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said uh, uh, about uh, the Dolce, I said, you know, I take my hat off to him that, uh, you know, he's standing there and he's fighting injuries. And, uh, you know, if they're going to hack him, uh, you know, he's going to make a pay. And hopefully, uh, you know, that'll continue. And to look at, you know, the team as a whole, Frank Howard, there's no backup point guard. He fouls out with 639 left in the game against Michigan State. I had a feeling after that, I was like, they're going to win this game for him. Because it's just that's just the story that Syracuse is writing this year. When they're not supposed to, they're finding a way. And when he goes out and there's almost seven minutes left in the game, Tyus is taking the ball up. There's no other point guard on the team to come in. Howard Washington would have been the other guy, but he's hurt and he barely played this season. Just what you saw the team do, because you and I have spoken a lot about being a brotherhood and being together and caring about one another and doing for one another. That moment in Syracuse's history this season when the team saw Frank go out with a double foul, you know, back to back, and then ended up winning the game without him. Well, I think uh, you know, Ryder came off the bench and gave him a lot of energy. Uh, you know, it, it was you know not much of a surprise to him. I mean, there was no one else to go to, and uh, you know, thank goodness, uh, you know, he was ready to play. And I think he gave the you know the team a little bit of energy uh, with his hustle and his play. And I, I know um, Ty's battle can handle the ball. He's done that before. Uh, you know, Michigan State didn't really pressure him coming up the floor, so you know, it made it a little bit easier for him. That you know, the pressure wasn't there. And also, uh, old Shaper said, I mean, he, he doesn't handle the ball that bad. I mean, I'm quite sure, uh, you know, if push comes to shove, uh, he can bring the ball up the floor. So, in, in that sense, um, you know, uh, you know, I think that you know, the team wanted you know for for themselves, uh, you know, uh, and that's what uh, teams are all about. You know, it's, uh, you know, everybody says next man up. Well, you know. We're limited to what we have, but, you know, the next man stepped up and uh, played well. So, uh, you know, in, in that sense, uh, you know, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, it would have made any difference, um, you know, if Frank would have played the game or if he was out of the game that, uh, you know, we would have got the same result. Has this team, I mean, when you look at them right now, what are some words that you can use to describe this year's team as you see them move on to the Sweet 16? Well, I mean, they're gritty. They're determined. You know they've got a lot of heart. They're they're, they're a very close unit. Uh, you can see it in, in you know their actions on the bench and after after the games that they've played. Uh, even if it's a loss, you know you know they still embrace each other. Um, you know they're they're, they're a close knit team, and uh, you know maybe you know their actions are you know their leadership instead of uh, a lot of words. And you know they don't have a lot of words for the press or anyone else, but you know they're you know proven to themselves and everyone else on the floor that. Uh, you know, they are one close group, and, you know, as a unit, uh, you know, they have to keep you there winning games. Matt Moyer, in, in closing here, Dale, Matt had said, you know, we had a bunch of people count us out. He said some of our own fans were against us and counted us out and thought that we couldn't, and we came back anyways. With this team having the con- – you know, people around the country say they don't deserve it, they shouldn't be there, and then – but when it goes home to central New York – and they feel like some of their fan base had turned the other direction to see this team do that above all of that. Because, you know, normally you reach out to your support. If your support's not there, or maybe not there 100%, just to say what that means for the team, because they have gained support over the last few games, but there was also the expectation by some that they would not get in the tournament, and if they did, that they might not win a game. Well, I mean, you know how I feel, you know, deep down in my heart, I, I feel that Syracuse should make a tournament every year. But, uh, you know, looking at their, uh, you know, their their schedule and, you know, how they play throughout the year, you know, I had doubts that they were going to make it. And, you know, when it's, when it's not in your hands as a fan or as a uh, alumni or whatever, I mean, you wish and hope they get in. But, you know, when it's in somebody's hands and that, you know, you don't know what they're going to do. So, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we feel the worst, we think the worst, and uh, hope for the better. And that doesn't mean you're not a good fan. It doesn't mean that, you know, they gave up on you. It, it's just a point where, you know, th- those selections weren't in our hands. Uh, we couldn't make that selection, uh, or they would have been the first pick, uh, you know, out of the draw. 
So, uh, you know, to feel that the fans have gone against you, I don't think they have. I, I just feel that, uh, you know, they weren't uh, too sure about how the, which way the committee was going to go on, uh, you know, what they did throughout the regular season. That coming from Dale Shackelford of the Syracuse Orange men's basketball history. Dale, as always, I appreciate it. I know you'll enjoy watching the upcoming games that are going to be going on from Omaha, Nebraska, as Syracuse moves on and in their Midwest division have seen everybody that they could face. They have Duke, and then Kansas and Clemson have also faced Syracuse this season. So it'll be an interesting Midwest region as we move forward from here. And as always, Dale, I appreciate your time and taking some minutes with us here on the show this morning. Dan, thank you very much, and uh, have fun in Omaha. All right, thanks, Dale. I'll talk to you soon. I'll bring the sun back, hopefully. Well, we will. Hopefully we'll have it before that. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I'll talk with you soon, okay? All right, thank you. Thanks, take care. Bye. That coming from Dale Shackelford once again of the Syracuse Orange men's basketball history. We'll take a quick step aside, and we'll come back with Otis Hill to wrap up today's show. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Utica Pizza Company spells family, your family, my family, their family. The recipes that they have shared with each other throughout the years and have now been so gracious to share them with us. I can sit here and talk with you about all the great things that are on the menu. We'd be here forever. So let me say this. Utica Pizza Company is second to none. And now you can bring it home with you and you can dine in in the restaurant. UticaPizzaCompany.com will give you all the information that you need. And let me say, these Utica Greens, they're the best. Utica Pizza Company. Call them and place your order at 315-214-3060. That's 315-214-3060. Families break bread at Utica Pizza Company. For all of us that have always wanted our favorite restaurant to come to us, it's now a reality in Central New York with It's a Utica Thing. With Utica Pizza Company bringing their wonderful recipes that they've handed down through generations to you, to your events, to your business, to your home. It's a Utica Thing. Proudly bringing Utica Pizza Company on wheels to your location. Call 315-738-8946. That's 315-738-8946 to bring Utica Pizza Company to your doorstep with It's a Utica Thing. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. Call our home office at 315-752-9513 or better yet, call or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Let me ask you a question, Lawrence. If I needed you to help me Buy a house, find the right place. Could you help me do that? Joe, I'll help you find your dream home. You don't ever say my name on the radio, never. If I needed to sell a house, could you help me go about that the right way? Yes, yes I can. How do they get a hold of you? Call me directly at 315-748-2524. But you also do the commercial property. So if I got a business, couple businesses, got to take one here, move it over there, do this, do that. Are you going to help me buy and sell my commercial property? Also. Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. What's my name again? I have no idea. Absolutely. But they need to know your name, so give it one more time. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. My phone number is 315-748-2524. Why don't you tell them your name one more time and that number so we can jot it down. This is Lawrence Papaleo. Call me or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. I want to thank Dale Shackelford one more time, Syracuse Orange men's basketball alum, for being part of the show this morning and for everything that he has done to be a part of the show over the years and for all the pregames that we've done over the last three years and, and just everything. I really do appreciate it, and I appreciate his friendship more than anything. Coming up tonight, Bishop Ludden High School. I'm helping them out tonight, doing a trivia night. I will be your host tonight, March 21st. Doors open at 6. Trivia will begin at 7. It's $10 per player, 6 players max per team. Must be 21 or older. Games, prizes, raffles, and more. Join them for fun and games. Join me over there at the All-Star Alley and Tavern in Destiny, USA. You can book your team still by emailing LuddenTrivia at gmail.com. That's L-U-D-D-E-N Trivia at gmail.com. LuddenTrivia at gmail.com. Or you can call 315-391-9043. That's 
9043. Make sure you do that if you want to get your team in tonight. We have uh, just around 20 teams, just about 20 teams. I think we have 17 right now. Then they're going to be playing tonight, raising money for Bishop Ludden's after the gala, their their prom, so to speak, that they uh, the prom that they do every year, they call it the gala. They are raising money for a healthier alternative of what to do after their gala. So they're raising money to have a drug free, alcohol free, safe time where everybody over at Bishop London that's going to prom can have a good time and get home safely and enjoy themselves without you know parents having to worry about them and them having to worry about themselves and their friends. So I'm all for this because you know me, I've Never been drunk. I've never done drugs. I've never smoked a cigarette. And I know some people are like, oh, you know, dance, straight edge. That's what you do, blah, blah, blah. It's not about being a straight edge. I have always wanted to be in control of my life to the best of my ability. I'd want to know what I was doing and why I was doing it. I wanted to feel like I could make decisions for myself. And I like being in a position to help other people as opposed to being in a position where people have to take care of me. So, you know. I've just done my best throughout my life to be smart with that, and I appreciate that Bishop Ludden is doing something like this for the kids to say, hey, we want you to enjoy the prom, we want you to have fun, we want you to be safe, and we want to give you something to do that is going to be exciting, and at the same time, you know, it's not going to be a a crisis type of situation. So I appreciate what they're trying to do, I appreciate their efforts for that, and I appreciate how much they care about the community and the young men and women here in the community to do something like this. So we're raising money for the After the Gala party for Bishop Ludden tonight. Trivia night with myself, Dan Tortora, Wednesday, March 21st. Doors open at 6. Trivia starts at 7. Tonight, March 21st, $10 a player, 6 players per team, and the money is going to Bishop Ludden for their healthy alternative to a party after their gala this year. And it's going to be at All-Star Alien Tavern on the third floor of Destiny USA, the entertainment floor. So that being said, we're going to wrap up the show a little bit earlier today. Otis is not going to be able to be with us this morning. He is going through a meeting. And so this happens. Normally he's working when he gets here. So he tries to pull off some time on the phone with us while he's at the job. And sometimes he can, sometimes he cannot. So we'll look to get him on later on this week. I want to thank Otis for being a part of the broadcast as many times as he has and obviously is always welcome here on the show. We're going to wrap up today. Please take care of yourself and be good to yourself. And I look forward to seeing you out at the Alley All-Star Alien Tavern this today, March 21st. 6 p.m. doors open, 7 p.m. it starts in Destiny, USA. So All-Star Alien Alley and Tavern Third floor, Destiny USA, tonight. We look forward to seeing you out there and having some fun. Thank you so much for all you do, and thank you so much for being a part of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. You can find us on Twitter at CallDT, Instagram at WakeUpCall underscore DT, Facebook at WakeUpCallDT, and obviously everything on WakeUpCallDT.com, the RSS feed, the downloadable app powered by Podbean, as well as the iTunes podcast, the live feed from MixLR, and so much more. So make sure you go on the website, check it out, and have some fun, and I appreciate you being a part of it as always. We'll talk with you tomorrow morning, Thursday, March 22nd, at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. God bless and be well, and until then, be good to one another, be good to yourself, and always say thank you for waking up in the morning. Have a great day.